in this video we introduce a new concept the concept of characteristic of a ring and we begin with the definition characteristic characteristic of a ring the characteristic of, of a ring r is the least positive integer n such that n x equals 0 for all elements for elements in the um, now in the ring this is not the reals this is I'm so addicted to write real numbers uh, for all x in the ring this r is for the ring not for the reals okay if no such integer exists we say the ring has characteristic zero okay so um, for for instance the ring of integers has characteristic zero right um, and any ring module n has characteristic n please don't think that all uh, infinite rings have characteristic zero because there are infinite rings that have non-zero characteristic for instance um, the ring uh, Z module 2 of polynomials in the uh, indeterminate X of all polynomials with coefficients in Z2 has characteristic 2 and this will be an infinite um, an infinite ring okay with characteristic 2 okay but the integers the integers has characteristic 0 easy to, to check that if the ring has a unity we can use the next theorem and this is the very useful theorem characteristic of a ring with unity let R be a ring with unity 1 if 1 has infinite order under addition then the characteristic of the ring is 0 if 1 has order n under addition then the characteristic of the ring is n. The proof is really easy. Okay, so we have a ring with unity 1 and either one has infinite order, we are talking about addition, and we say that the characteristic is 0, the characteristic of the ring is 0, or 1 has order n under addition of course always under addition then the characteristic of the ring is n, n. okay so if this is the case if proof if one has infinite order then there is no positive integer n such that n times one equals zero okay because one has infinite order so this means that the ring has characteristic zero okay now suppose that one has additive order n so meaning that n times 1 um, equals 0 and n is the least positive integer with this property so for all x in the ring we have n x equals so n n times 1 x meaning uh, n times 1 right n times 1 x and this will be 
zero x so that will be zero so the characteristic will be n okay and this proves the theorem probably it's better to write it this one so if 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 one has infinite order under addition this will never happen so n times one will never be zero okay one has infinite order then there is no positive integer n this doesn't exist such that n times one equals zero okay this will never happen so the ring is characteristic zero another theorem is the one about the characteristic of an integral domain so the characteristic of an integral domain is either zero or is a prime number okay uh, I can take this I can do this proof this is really easy okay uh, so the characteristic of an integral domain is zero or prime so we are in an integral domain okay so if we use the previous theorem that says that the characteristic of um, a ring with unity an integral domain is a ring with unity the characteristic of a ring with unity if one has infinite order under addition then the characteristic of the ring is zero if one has order n under addition then the characteristic of the ring is n so using that theorem we only have to show that if the additive order of one is finite it must be prime we're going to show that if this is uh, the, the characteristic under addition order of one is finite it must be prime okay so let us suppose that one has order n and let's let us say that n is st so one obviously will be smaller than s and t will be smaller than n of course so then uh, n times 1 will be 0 right we are supposing that 1 has order n so n times 1 we will get to 0 okay but what is n times 1 n is st so we're going to write st times 1 but st times 1 this is an integral domain so we can say s times 1 times t times 1 okay so this equals 0 so s times 1 times t times 1 equals 0 okay so this is an integral domain so the the cancellation law holds so uh, it means that um, s times 1 equals 0 or t times 1 equals 0 but this is a contradiction because it contradicts the fact that 1 has order n so n cannot be factored as a product of two smaller integers okay so either the character either the characteristic is zero or it cannot be factored so it has to be prime of course 
And this concludes the theorem. This concludes the proof. So here it's about time to talk about uh, polynomials with coefficients from a ring. And we will get back to that. So the existence of zero divisors in a ring causes some unusual results when we are going to find the roots of polynomials with the coefficients in the ring. What do I mean by this? Let us consider, for instance, the, this equation x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So if we are talking about the integers, it would be easy to find all the solutions because we would do simply x squared that would be a a kindergarten exercise it just factor equals zero right and now this means that either x minus three equals zero or x minus one equals zero Okay, but we said all solutions um, here we are using the fact that the only way for a product to equal zero, the only way for a product to equal zero is one of the factors being zero, right? We are using this a zero means a equals zero or b equals zero okay that is we are using the fact do not forget we, we began this in the integers that integers we are using the fact that integers is an integral domain okay But let us say we are not in the integers, but in the integers module 12. Well, here everything gets a bit complicated because there are many pairs. If you take the, the set 1, 2, 2, 11, you have lots of pairs of elements where you're going to get 0. For instance, 2 times 6 module 12 is 0, right? Or 3 times 4 module 12 is 0. Or 4 times 6 module 12 is 0. 6 times 8 module 12 is 0. And, and I can get you, I can show you a couple of other products that you'll get zero, uh, where the elements in the set are not zero. One of them is not zero. So, if we have this same problem in Z12, let us say this problem, x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals zero, all this in Z12. How can we find all solutions? All solutions. Well, right, we always have the, the brute force. We get the elements one by one, multiply all them one by one. Well, okay. So, you can do that. If you do that, you can see that one of the solutions is uh, the four solutions is x equals one equal one so one one plus three four four minus four zero 
another solution is x equals 3 because this will be 9 9 minus 12 3 okay easy to check x equals 7 do not forget that we are talking module 12 and x equals 9 so you have four solutions here okay Um, okay, you can say, oh, I, I, I got the same solutions, uh, 3 and 1 here. Well, yes, you did. Okay, so if you did this over 11 or Z13, those two would always be solutions too. Okay. But the reason why this works for this kind of rings is that they are integral domains. So these integral domains are very important uh, and particular rings. And so I'm going to show now a table with some of the nice characteristics of this kind of rings.